minute. We're getting a World War I Battlefield game? That's right, boys and ghouls. This time around, the guys at DICE have thought instead of going to the future, like a lot of its competitors, that it would take a look into the past for inspiration, specifically the Great War. And honestly, I can't think of a better setting to let loose artillery volleys and dramatic bayonet charges. The game takes place near the end of the war, in 1918, when a lot of the weapons and concepts had developed enough to resemble their World War II counterparts. The weapons at our disposal range from bolt-action rifles to experimental self-loaders and one-off weapons. And with drastic changes to the weapons, we also have some changes to the classes. For one, Assault is no longer our medic stand-in and serves as an anti-vehicle trooper. Now clad with early submachine guns and anti-tank grenades, it is a formidable class to mess with. As I said, Assault is no longer the medic, as the medic gets its own class this time around. Just like in the good old days. Yeah. <laughs> Good old days. The medic wields early self-loading rifles like the exotic Shea Rigatti and the German M1916 Selbstschlader. Using weapons that are an automatic is a nice touch. It means you aren't quite a one-man army, but still equally as important as the other classes. Now the support class is similar to past Battlefield games. It wields a light machine gun like the Bergman MG-15 and the French M-1909 Benet Mercy. The Scout, which takes the place of Recon, is probably the least changed class as they still fulfill the role of the sniper and it does it really well. The Engineer class has been relayed over to the Pilot class. Basically the Pilot class can only be used when spawned on an early aeroplane or tank. They can fix the vehicles and only really carry a humble pistol carbine or a sawed off shotgun. Another special class is the Calvary class that starts off mounted on horseback and dons the Winchester 1895 Russian lever action rifle and a Calvary saber. Honestly, the Calvary class is my favorite in the game and I will ditch my Kameraden to strike down fools from my mighty steed. Unfortunately, there isn't that much customization to be had with these special classes, apart from vehicle skins and maybe a different weapon. That's all you really get. And finally, we have the one-off elite classes, which sort of act like hero characters from Battlefront. The three current elite classes are the Sentry, that wears enough armor to withstand an army and wields the mighty MG-08 heavy machine gun. Next is the Flame Trooper that carries the, sorry if I botched this pronunciation, the M16 Wexel Apparat, a mighty flamethrower that will scorch the hell out of your enemies. And finally, we have my favorite, the Tank Hunter class that wields the comically oversized M1918 Tank Gewehr, which fires the huge 13.2mm Tank und Fliege cartridge. Really, I just love the class because it probably wields one of my favorite weapons of all time. Supposedly, it was 35 pounds and a heavy 41 pounds with the massive bipod. Other than the newer, or, well, I guess older weapons, we have an overhaul of the melee system. Melee no longer seems like a gimmick just to get dog tanks and actually functions as a practical last ditch effort to dispatch your foe, but for a quick and equally brutal dispatching you can go for a bayonet charge, which is so much fun and feels so satisfying when you get to yell at the top of your lungs and gut a guy with a bayonet, but beating the hell out of a guy with an entrenchment tool is also equally satisfying. The animations are slick and oddly intimate. You feel your foe is being struck down, and you can feel it when it happens to you. And ultimately, intimate is well what I would classify as Battlefield 1's combat. Because of the nature of early self-loading firearms, they are more raw and crude than modern firearms, so to speak. And it's because of that crudeness that gives these weapons a more distinct feeling in combat. You could empty a whole magazine on a dude and miss. Really, it is not unheard of to go through your entire arsenal just to kill a single guy in the frenzy of it. I enjoy it because it speaks to what the First World War mostly consisted of, which is little intimate skirmishes with the occasional massive offensive. My only real gripe with the weapons is that there is a large degree of historical inaccuracy and anachronism. As I said, some of these weapons are rather exotic, some only being fielded in numbers of several hundred while others were purely experimental. Now I feel that my woes could be alleviated with a game mode that would specifically consist of bolt action rifles, but unfortunately we don't have one at the moment. But to be honest, this is a very minor gripe that may only be applicable to history enthusiasts like myself. If you want a more grounded experience, you're better off playing a game called Verdun instead. 
It's a World War I game, but has more grounded combat and weapons. It might be a little rough around the edges, but it's fun if you're a fan of Red Orchestra. The one thing Battlefield definitely has over Verdun is DICE's unrivaled visual and audio design. Each match feels absolutely cinematic. Biplanes are whizzing in the air. Machine gun fire can be heard from afar. You hear the medic spout something in German as he rescues your friend, all the while you're in the middle of a bayonet charge screaming at the top of your lungs. The destruction has been turned up to 11, as buildings seem to look like they did after a match of Bad Company 2, which is to say, completely demolished. But the most impressive sight is witnessing a zeppelin be destroyed and crashing into the battlefield to produce some spectacular map changes. Some of the most cinematic moments can be found in the Operations game mode. Operations is almost like Turning Point in Battlefront, where you have one team attack with limited number of tickets and the other one try and hold them back. How Operations differs is that instead of one map, you usually have two or three with several attempts at attacking. In a game, you have to control or defend points. When a set of points gets conquered, the map moves up, and when it does, it is very cinematic. If you are attacking, you and your fellow soldaten will yell at the top of your lungs into the next phase of the battle while artillery explodes and the music swells to a dramatic degree. Needless to say, it feels very cinematic. Sometimes too cinematic. As for Conquest, it still remains as a Battlefield staple, and thusly, not much has changed. The improvements to Conquest really come from the well-done maps. You get a great variety of maps, ranging from the tight streets of Amiens, to the vast expanses of the Sinai Desert, and the intimate fighting on the Italian Alps. Because of the variety of the maps and the different theaters of war, it provides us with quite a variety of factions. The factions in Battlefield 1 include Britain, the United States, the Kingdom of Italy, the German Empire, the Austro-Hungarian Empire, and the Ottoman Empire. And while the current selection is great, it feels like we're missing some really essential factions. Gee, wonder who they could be. As you can tell, unfortunately France and Tsarist Russia is not in the game. Now I can understand the Russians as they surrendered in March of 1918, but come on you guys, really? Half the maps are in France. What do you mean they aren't in the game? Oh. Now let's go on to another subject and start talking about Battlefield 1's story. Usually the campaign is a leftover, and to be honest, it still is in Battlefield 1. That being said, they took it on a neat spin this time around. The campaign follows an anthology series of missions, showing the war from different perspectives and different theaters of the war. And it's finally nice to see something that I feel should have been implemented years ago in the Battlefield campaigns. But it isn't without its flaws. Unfortunately, it showcases stories from the Entente, Britain, France, Italy, and the US, but none from the Central Powers. I would have hoped we would have gotten a German, Austro-Hungarian, or Ottoman perspective, but I guess we gotta keep perpetuating the myth of German villainy until the end of time. But really, it's a small gripe in an otherwise rudimentary campaign. All in all, Battlefield 1 is a great step in the series. While anachronistic, it tries new things with its setting and comes out better for it. The presentation from DICE is masterfully done, as usual, and we have a return to a more traditional orchestral soundtrack. It feels like something new and refreshing, but doesn't forget its roots. If you're looking for a shooter that provides a more arcadey vibe to a well-rounded tactical gameplay, then I genuinely recommend Battlefield 1. I am happy to say that Battlefield 1 is a very solid 8 out of 10. Classic, visceral, and cinematic, Battlefield 1 is genuinely the best Battlefield game since Battlefield 2142. If you're still on the fence but you're really tired of playing more futuristic games like the way Call of Duty has been going lately, I would definitely recommend Battlefield 1. But more on a more serious side note, I'm sorry guys that it took so long to pump out this review, but I know you guys want to know what I think. But know that I do have some different things coming up on the channel, not to mention some other big games releasing this year, so stay tuned. But in the end, this is Tom the Chosen One, and I'll see you guys next time. Now,
Can you leave me? Can't you see my tears? 